www.cowlibrary.com slash category slash category 6 slash c 63006.htm introduction to DL. 先天大造简介 introduction to DL. 中英对照天天大道简介一和为天天大道二道与我有什么关系三求道是求什么四求道对我有什么好处五具备什么条件才可以求道六求道对我在生活有什么影响西道的宝贵有什么印证一和为天天大道先天大道又简称道我们若仔细的去观察心窍开悟之后就可发觉宇宙间森罗万象皆是杂而有趣而自然界万事万物的运转也都有一定的法则天地人是万物的真主宰就是道道乃在天地生成之前即已存在不曰先天大道道者立也立就是真理在天地人万物未生以前道即已存在而道能生天生地生人生万物万类在天地人万物毁灭之后道不会毁灭道因为无取无来不生不灭乃代表着宇宙间更不不变的真理道的本体也就是宇宙自然的本体在混沌未判之初宇宙间只是一环灵妙理无天无地无人也没有语言和文字所以我们时无法以任何语言文字或思虑来形容它故大道无名强名曰道我们也是勉强用道这个名词来代表它在天地万物生成之后早又能贯穿于宇宙万事万物之中使一切的自然现象均能呈现和谐有条不问的运转这就是道的妙用道大理为我们虽然无时无刻离不开道的本体和妙用却又很不容易去认识它因此在两三千年前各交圣人因运出世各化一方针对当时天时地利及众生的根气留下千经万点传下诸多血恶从善的修持法门同时宇宙万事万物均有一个真正的主宰或称为上帝或称为造化或称为天主我们称其为道或无生老均持一名而同意我们对道有了深一层的认识和体悟之后就会了解天地间十无一物不是导致本体与妙用的合一因此道虽然涵盖各大教门的经义为千门万教的总源头确实不局限于宗教的领域里而上帝或老也不只代表着一切宗教的最高信仰中心更是天地万事万物万类的根本源头与最高主宰其宇宙间永恒不变的真理之道所以我们今天有机会
，了解什么是先天大道，不止找到了各大教门的最高信仰中心。也找到了宇宙的根本源头与最高主宰，更能对宇宙至高无上的真理有一个初步的认识。道之真意，在先天之先不为先，在后天之后不为后。即大上有可量，即为上有可止，为道即大不可量。即为不可止，不所以大无不包围，无不入，无所不贯，无所不通，无所不彻，贯彻了天地人万物万类，贯彻了三十三天外，贯彻了千经万典，贯彻了千法万法，贯彻了千教万教，贯彻了千佛万祖。贯彻了我之一身，此乃显天大道宝贵的真意。人人必须知真觉，一即是人人与我，我与人人良心之行也。此乃万众一心，万国一家，世界大同，此先天大道之宝贵也。二。道与我有什么关系？道的宝贵在于它大而无所不包，细而无所不入。天地生成之后，道贯穿于天地万物万类，使得日月星辰之运转各有其时，四时之交替，万物之消长各有其序。而最宝贵的是，各天地万物的主宰，同时也是我们人一生之主宰。曰性理，是得我们不学而能看、能听、能吃、能动。因此，我们不只要探求天地间的治理。更要回头认识我们身上固有的真理，不先天大道即是性理真传，道的宝贵，并不在于它有什么神秘稀有或特殊之处，而是在于它平时，但我们却时时刻刻离不开它的本体与妙用。我们反观一下自身，就会发觉我们身体的结构是非常精密和奥妙的。我们轻轻的握一下手，就算是这么简单的一个动作，其中所牵涉到的所有关节、物理作用、能量。化学反应、神经系统资料、讯息之传输及脑部分析、判断和命令之下达。以目前全世界的科技知识和文明水准，也无法一一表达出来。但是，我们做出的动作的能力。却完全不因个人知道上了程度的差异而有任何影响。无论是学识多丰富的学者，或是目不识丁贩夫狗卒，无论是成人，或是刚出生不久的婴儿，都可以轻而易举的做出的动作。人人与生俱来，不学而知，不学而能，无增无减的良知良能，就是主宰我们一身的道。我们由学习而得到的知识和才能，有忘记的时候，有疏远的时候，而道的本体和妙用，不用学习。不用思考，大而能主宰宇宙的运作、消长
笑而能主宰我们一身之视听言动，我们有而不知其有，用而不知其用，却又无时无刻不能缺少它。的不增不减，但自举足一切，我们身上固有的道，因为就在我们身上，又称作自信老。我们了解了个主宰天地万物的道，在我们身上就有它的作用，不应受到我们赞美或否认而有任何增减。不论种族、肤色、国籍、宗教、信仰或贫贱富贵，均无分无别。因此。我们能求得先天大道，不只找到了宇宙的根本源头，也找到了不生不灭的真我。不只认识了宇宙，也认识了我一生的真正主宰。不只追求到了宇宙之至理，也找回了我身上。本有的真理与良知、良能，先天大道的根源是在我身上。原来固有的是我由先天带来的良知、良能，即是我的良心。我的良心即是天心，天心即是道心，此心无情无相，即是真空。真空之妙，空而不空，空中妙有，妙有者，生天生地生人生万物万类之大本也。妙有者，万灵真在也，主宰天地人万物万类之真主宰，亦即是主宰我之一身。故曰：道在无身。一切万能，道理无身，此身百无一能。先天大道如此宝贵，乃人人必须追求之道也。三求道是求什么？静心观察我们所存在的的宇宙，我们往往会赞造物主的神奇。自然界每一刻皆有无数的事物在同时运转，而其整体却又是那么协调。我们身上的的真理不也是一样吗？每一分一秒，我们身上皆有无数的生化反应、物理作用等同时发生。道的妙用分布在我们身上，不用学习，不用思考，其作用虽成千上万，合起来却只有一个自我。一切有条不紊，自然而成。道在无身，运用自如，在眼能视，在耳能听，在口能言。在鼻能闻香臭，在身能运用情动作事，此即道在我身之妙用。所以，我们了解了道，不止主宰这天地万物，更主宰我们一身。宇宙根本源头最高主宰于我我一身主宰，并非二也。道的本体无形无相，我们肉眼看不到它，手也摸不到它，但它却无时无刻不再发挥其妙用，更进而随着天时及环境而发展出语言、文字、经典及造福人类的文明。此即是我们良知、良能之作用。一般人不了解道，在于我们自身的本体和妙用，只模糊意识到它的存在，便以灵魂代表它
我们称其为自信老，因其没有生灭，也不会毁坏。我们也称其为真我，此真我乃是最富足、最圆满、最光明、最完美、永恒不朽的。现在我们来生一看。看得见、摸得这有形有相的肉体，能不能代表我把一个人生命中不同阶段的照片拿来比较，我们就可发觉，面貌是无时无刻不在变化的。我们一般均习惯以相貌认人，但相貌却不是永恒的。我们的肢体也不是真我。某些人不幸失去了一只手或一只脚，仍是好好的活着。我们的内脏呢？现在科学昌明，其质体能把动物的心脏成功地植入人体。我们不能因此说，个人不是他自己了。就算猴的脑细胞，从我们一出生就开始不断的在快死、减少和变化之，因此有形有相的肉体只是真我的一个工具而已。肉体虽然看似真实，却无时无刻不在改变之中，不拘束十年。又变成一堆黄土，因它不是永恒的，我们称之为假我。对于真我和假我有所了解之后，我们也就可以了解，我们为什么要求到了。如今我们非常幸运能有机会求得先天大道。求得的就是三宝，三宝简单明了，但也博大精深。其内容在求道时会详细解说。现在只简单的提出两点：首先，求道就是直接点出了真正永恒不休的真我，也就是良心本性的发。在物质文明、远较精神文明昌盛的今日，假若迷失真我，我们的人生将有如行尸走肉。若是认假为真，更是我们为了盲目满足假我而做出害己害人的事情。造成自己在世时与死后的灾祸，因此求道启发了我们内在本的真我、良心、真我、假我协调融合，使我们的人生不论存末，都是平安、喜乐、自在、充实而有意义。其次。求道，也就是开启了我们身上的正门，又称良心之门、智慧之门、慈悲之门。各门非常的重要。当我们要离开一间房子时，自然由大门离去。如果此门无法开启，而被迫从窗户。或阳台跳出时，就可能会摔断腿。我们的肉体就像一间房子，真我灵性就像是房子的主人。当有一天肉体要毁坏时，真我灵性若不得正门而出，被迫另寻旁门。其恐惧与焦虑是无法形容的，这也导致了死后的痛苦与不安。因此，我们可以发现到，绝大多数的人临终时，其肉体皆显现山僵硬、恐惧无助。
与挣扎之相。求道就是开启我们的生来死去之正门，也就是通天大路。因此，我们今天很幸运能求道，求得三宝。打开灵性通天之正门，可以让我们找回真我，认识我自己身上的道，自然以良心作为待人物之准则，使人生更有意义，更进而解决生死大事，得到超生了死的保障。百年之后。回到我们本来不家乡，所以先天大道又是回天之道。先天大道之宝贵，即是千经万点不如一点，此点打开玄关正门、佛门、天堂大路，一步直超级的永生之道。此点宝贵。超佛越祖，超经越典，超越天地，得到这一点宝贵，他是诸经之师，诸法之王，诸佛之天地之，不曰超生了四极的永生，不毁不灭之先天大道也。此乃即是人人原来固有的。必须返回天之道也。四求道对我有什么好处？我们今天很高兴能有个机缘求道，能够开启良心之门、智慧之门、通天之正门，这是第一步。这宝贵的道。还能带给我们终生受用不尽的福之一，离苦的乐。人生在世，遭受种种之苦恼，就其根源皆起因于迷失了真我。求道，首先就是让我们认识人人身上固有的道。召回我们本有至真、至善、至美、具足、圆满、永恒不休的真我，在日常言行之中发挥真我，使我们一举一动皆能合于理，至于至善，自然不会受周遭的人事物所左右，我们的心也就不会患得患失。心为一身之主，我们既然在心境上有所提升，自然不会与邪恶之事相感应，则不相随心转，还可以改变命运，趋吉避凶，朝向光明，使我们得到真正的喜悦、逍遥自在。二堕地，南自有人类文明以来，道德真义便代代单传独授，其没落贯穿了早期的主要文明，如中国、印度等。奈何近百年来，人类受物欲所逼。在空前繁荣的物质文明中，逐渐迷昧了良心，甚至竞相制造威力极大的杀人武器。回顾数千年人类历史，在近代短短数十年间，便发生了两次世界大战，无数挑战，伤亡无数。滥用科技文明，同时也损害了自然环境，造成大气臭氧层之破坏。全球性气候的改变，人心之变，但造了天灾人祸连连。人类已为自己酝酿了一个空前的浩劫，因此，上帝洪恩慈悲。特将大道谱传于世
一万就良善，求道以后，我们时刻存着道心，以良心待人处事。当遇有人力不可挽救的灾祸时，只要诚心使用三宝，必能灾必劫，逢凶化吉。此事验证甚多，不生枚举。三超生了四人生，又如一段苦乐相参的旅程，遭受生存竞争、衰老、病痛、死亡等困苦，人皆难免。而人间种种欢乐，又往往是短暂易变的。尤其当旅程结束时，终究成空，归宿渺茫。更不禁令人吸毒畅往，是以智慧者有见于此，乃以超生了死，追求真实永恒的人生意义，为人生至高之目标。古代先修后的，因此古人为求超生了死，尽毕生之力苦修苦行。仍难以仿得名师达成心愿。如今大道普传，先走后修，在求道过程中，天命名师一指，开启了我们通天正门，先赋予超生了死的保障。我们得道以后，认识了真我，以真我为主宰。远离邪心妄念，让我们的心念、言语、行为，无论待人处事，皆合于良知。百年之后，真我灵性自然返回故家乡，永享平安喜乐。四成圣成贤求道，也就是为我们种下一个成圣成贤的正因。道种，只要靠我们以智慧、慈悲心境灌溉它，它必然萌芽、开花、结果。在此功利主义弥漫的黑暗时代，大道乃是光明的灯塔。求道、修道，不仅让我们能够独善其身。更是我们有机会可以兼善天下。求道之后，只要我们时刻抱着道心、良心，在日常生活中真诚实践道的精神，不计个人得失、荣辱，努力使周围每一个人都可得想到的好处。让道的光明照亮每一个角落，尽其一生精进不懈，则在世即成就圣贤事业，归天之后必正圣贤果位无疑。先天大道的宝贵就是天道天命，天命就是三曹名师。名师一点玄关开，打开正门，佛祖来，天堂飞在我身外，天上地下我都在。此乃先天大道的尊至贵至宝也。先天大道，天命宝贵，三曹名师这一点妙至极矣。非是在言语文字相生应可得，非是在千经万典上的，非是在讲经说法上的，非是在世智辩聪上的，非是在博学才能上的，非是在才高八斗上的。以上皆是生死法对待法。非是超生了死脱对待了生死之法也。此次级的先天大道妙用妙能的宝贵，其妙极矣。此者是无师智。
此智是妙智妙慧，此智此慧是我本来不有的，由先天带来的，一即是在找回来天地人万物万类未生以前我的初心。即我良心、天心、道心、老心，也先天大道之妙，此妙之贵，妙不容言，不学而知，不学而能，亦即是先天带来的先知先觉妙用妙能，此知此觉此能此用。不用言语、文字、声色，不用思想，不用念头，不用言听，是动而生天地人万物万类，生天地人万物万类之后，这天地人万物万类，实可分妙，也离不开其妙用妙能，故曰万灵真主宰也。设若天离开先天大道之妙用妙能，则河汉星斗乱序，日月无光，亦不能轮转，则阴阳二气不能流通。万物万类世界的众生，人人皆不得其生存。设若大地离开先天大道之妙用妙能。这金木水火土不能相配，则现象丛生，山崩地裂，海水枯干，亦使万物万类世界的众生人人不能得其生存。设若人离开先天大道之妙用妙能，则寸步难行，眼不能看，耳不能听，口不能言。总之，全身不能动作，一百日之后成了一堆臭骨、臭泥土。此乃先天大道妙用妙能的宝贵妙智极矣。设若觉悟认识先天大道之妙用妙能的支持而实行。即是天人和以天人一体治理，绝言妙不容言，不是死后成佛，当体即佛矣。故曰如来佛，如是佛也。此乃的先天大道修先天大道之好处。物具备什么条件才可以求道？求道，既然能够带给我们终生受用不尽的好处，我们今日能有机会求道，会不会显得太容易了？事实上，我们能得闻先天大道，首先要感谢上帝的恩慈，将自古不侵泄的大道不传于世。使我们有机会得此天之道。另一方面，我们本身也必须具备足够的条件，祖上有德，根基深厚，佛缘成熟，才能够顺利求道。此外，我们必须向宇宙至高无上的造物主上帝发一个良心愿。此愿可归纳为三个要点：一得道以后，愿意铭记并实践道的精神，也就是日常生活所思、所言、所行，皆愿以良心作为依归；二得道以后，愿以能力所及，助周围需要我们帮助的人。愿意多了解道的意义，并让更多的人蒙受天道的福祉。三得道以后，绝不将求得的三宝告知任何人。三宝必须在庄严的求道过程中。
天命名师传授给我们，才有真实意义。若有我们泄露给其他人，则不但毫无意义、毫无效果，我们自己也违反了天律的良心愿。合乎人人本具天赋的良知良能，所以我本人人都能够做到。真诚实践良心愿，也必须滋润我们求道时种下的智慧、慈悲、清净、知正、应道种，使它顺利萌芽、开花、结果。才不至虚度这千载难逢的求道修道良辰。值得一提的是，我们能顺利求道，原因之一即是沾了祖德的光，是故上天开恩，只要我们修道有恒，则我们的祖先也有机会可以求道。超生得救，我们的子孙亦的印地，对父母、祖先尽大孝，这是最好的机会。只要具备以上条件，则无论任何国界、种族、宗教、信仰的人，都可以求道，欲求得天天大道，脱出轮回之苦、地狱之灾。世间的穷通、受忧、鳏寡、孤独、生老病死、苦，而返天堂、永享天伦之乐者，必须我有得遇六万年良辰佳期的幸运。我本人心地善良，我有先天根基深厚，也就是我本人前世做的功德善事很多。此即天缘，我本人祖先有功德，做善事，此即祖上有德。我目人遇到引导师，度我得道，此佛缘已至，也就是前生我们一同做过功德善事。或一同有修过宗教，今生遇天道将士，一同得道修道，此乃佛缘已至。六求道对我的生活有什么影响？现今正值上天恩开，先天大道普传，拯救良善之时，故普传方式皆以方便善巧。与众生契机为原则，因此修道不会对我们正常的生活造成任何负面影响。这与以往许多人苦修苦练，甚至出家的修行方式有很大差别。也正因为如此。先天大道能在日新月异的现代。适应社会的各个阶层，传播到世界的各个角落，使人人皆有共沾天恩的闻大道的机会。关于求道对生活有什么影响，我们就以下几点来看，已与任何宗教。没有冲突，道代表着天地万物及我们一生之最高主宰与真理。不止在各大门创始之前，甚至在天地未生以前，道就已经存在了。因此，任何教门。只要其教义是追求真理及实践良心，就不会与道有任何冲突。事实上，不止宗教，只要我们以探求真理的角度去观察，则自然界万事万物皆能与道吻合与印证。若我们原有某种宗教信仰，
求到将不会造成任何抵触。也不会使我们背弃原有的信仰，反而让我们对真理的探求有更深一层的体认。二，以良心经为最高归戒，每一个人生活环境中的文化习俗、时代背景、法律条文及价值观念都不完全相同。因此，没有任何一个具体的规戒或条文能够适用于所有的人。所以，求道后的规戒，着重在我们每个人真我良心之实践，由真我良心主宰自己。而不是在经典之背诵上及律法之钻研上下功夫。三不照良心愿行，有何后果？很重要的一点，求道并非从外在加给我们良心与真理，而是借着开启我们智慧慈悲之门。找回我们身上固有的真理，让天理良心自然流露。因此，求道后，所有真修实行之人，皆是自动自发的。师父，求道后，若我们不照良心愿而行，并非将出现任何外力。来强制我们遵行此愿，而是将受到自己良心的谴责，由真我良心督促自己，而自然改过向善。四圣凡间修真我之实践，并不局限于教堂或寺庙之中，因此现今大道普传。并不要我们家舍业到深山古寺之中修炼，而是在不影响家庭工作、学业之正常情况下，圣凡间修，在日常生活中时时刻刻、一言一行，皆能以天理良心为依归，就是真我之实践。勿由提升自己而兼善天下，求到后会使我们生活更充实，心灵更和谐。而更重要的是，我们每一个人尽一己之力，解自身之提升，影响周遭之人事物，继而会成一股力量。在这举世天理良心日趋沦丧之潮流中，匡正人心，力挽狂澜，如此必能早日实现先天大道普传之宗旨及弥勒佛的原慈大愿，化污则的人间为人间净土，化纷乱的世界为世间天国。七道的宝贵有什么印证到是宇宙的至高真理？它的作用贯穿了天地万物万类，更是我们一生之最高主宰。真正了解了这一点，我们就会体认到，道是随时随处可以被印证的。许多前前得道之后，发出了大诚心、大信心、大智慧，真修真行，皆能参悟道。不止在各教经典之中可以印证道，其实在任何时间、空间、万事万物，我们之一身，甚至一草一木。皆离不开道的本体和妙用，体认至此，自然能发出永不退转之道心。而尚未求道或刚求道者
，则需借助于一些具有形象看得到、感受得到的印证，以奠定初步的信心。一任何人只要有求道。经过身但天命之名师点开玄关正门，传授三宝者，无论其功德高深微末，死后皆是身软如棉，面色如生，灵性由正门归天，东不品师，下不腐臭，甚有多至数日不变。一相满志者，目前的科技文明和医学知识还未进步到足以解释这种现象，但却无法否认个事实的存在。这种现象虽曾出现在某些宗教中，但极其罕见而珍贵。而求道之人，除信。道不笃于反道拜德者，不敢定论外；其余则比比皆是。肉身既显似瑞香，足可证其灵性已登善境，当无疑问。二人虽为万物之灵，其实是很脆弱的。自从生在个世界上。就难免天灾人祸的威胁，甚多以求道者，在遇到人力不可挽救之危急情况下，诚心使用三宝，皆能大事化小，小事化无。这种例证多得不可生数，无法在此一一例举。以上两点虽然极为宝贵，但却是任何人只要一求到，借着上帝的天命宝贵，立刻就可以得到的保障。此后，就随个人的诚心、智慧及对真理之实践，而有或深或浅不同的体验了。如人饮水。冷暖自知，希望各位具有善根，有机会能得闻大道的先生女士，皆能入宝山而满载而归，皆能求道而同真善境。Introduction to D A Y What is D A Y I D A Y and M E I I I What it is in D A Y B dot What do I get in R E C I B N in D A O B What do we need to receive D A O B I What impact does receiving D A O have on M E B I I What can attest the validity of D A Y What is D A O observing the cosmos and all the living beings consciously? Among all the earthly activities and phenomena, we will find the existence of the laws of nature. There is a supernatural origin which guides all the operations happening across the galaxy, the earth, and the human beings. We call this source Dao. Dao existed before primordial time. And even before the universe was merged, it is the origin of the world, and it thereafter nurtures all the creatures and beings. Since it is unchangeable and does not evolve with time, it is the ultimate truth. It is what all saints and sages throughout human history had been searching for. The essence of Tao is the foundation of nature. The law or the power that existed before the universe was formed is beyond description because there were no civilizations nor creatures, let alone languages. Since it cannot be applied any name, we simply call it Tao. 
after the world was merged, along with the mutations of the universe, we see the harmonious actions as exhibited in seasonal changes, rhythms of time and tide, and the balance of the ecosystem. We also find some conformity of human nature across various cultures. These prove the laws of nature. This is the extension of that original Tao when it is substantiated and materialized. It merged into everything that is with and within us. Now that we know Tao is present universally and yet difficult to be recognized, there had been prophets and preachers trying to make us know and understand the origin and the truth of life through various teachings and literature since the beginning of civilization. They were scattered around the world throughout history. As a result, great commandments were taught to disciples and goodness and badness were differentiated. These teachings varied, based on differences in culture, background, timing and the level of each individual's comprehension. However, they all tried to express and transmit to their descendants this creator and chief of the universe. It is God, or what we call Tao. As we get to know it more and more, we will realize that the essence of Tao and its effect covers every existence without any exceptions. Tao is actually the headwaters of all religions. It embraces the essence of all the preaching and teachings, and yet, it is superior to the system of belief. It is the nature, the universe itself. Tao or God represents the highest authority and power of nature. It is also the headstream and superior to all. It is the unchangeable principle. Understanding Tao allow us not only to discover the center of all religious belief, but also to communicate with the origin and the highest power of nature. We will then be able to relate ourselves to the truth of the universe. To probe further, Tao existed before the formation of all, yet it was not anterior which means that the creation was embedded in it. Tao emerges into the creation, yet is not posterior, which means that it is not thereafter limited. Among those created, however large, they can be measured, however small, they can be detected. It is only Tao that cannot be measured of its immensity nor detected of its existence. Therefore, it is larger than the largest and leaves nothing excluded, and yet it can be smaller than the smallest and leaves nothing not penetrated. It is ubiquitous. It merges into and governs all. It is in charge of the space, the earth, human beings, all the creatures, and all existences. It penetrates and regulates the entire universe. It is the source of all the scriptures, sutras, as well as dharmas. It encompasses all the religions, and it is what makes one a Buddha or a saint. It is the single chief of all. And, above all, it is in charge of each individual too. It is the divine self. This is the true meaning of Tao. We should get to know it this way and rediscover our own invaluable treasure. So, 
to practice Tao is to revive one's own conscience as well as everyone else's and to act upon it accordingly. Then, all people can be of one spirit, all nations can be in peace like a family, and the great harmony will come true. How precious Tao is! I, I. Dao and Emi the significance of Tao is in its immensity and ubiquity. Its mightiness guides the universe to carry on with changing seasons and evolving creatures. The countless aspects of the natural phenomena seem so capricious and yet really in order and in cycles. This Almighty Being also resides in each of us. It is the Divine Self, the natural quality of a person. It enables us to see, to feel, to taste, to hear, and to move without learning. While we research the ultimate truth in the universe, we should turn in upon and see into ourselves to discover that divine self. We will find the rules that govern the universe also comply with the way we are. Tao is not something too far to reach, nor too mysterious to comprehend. It is nothing particular, but has to do with our daily lives. We cannot do without it. Every movement we make, in order to see, to touch, to feel and to think, is associated with Tao. Consider how many wonders are hidden in our body, how delicately our physical functions are carried out. For example, when we shake hands, the components involved would include the coordination of joints and muscles, the chemical reactions of energy, the transmission of information through nerve systems, and the actions occurring in our brain such as issuing orders, making judgments and analyzing situations. Even with the most advanced technology and the highest level of knowledge we have developed today, we cannot completely reconstruct such a function. Yet the ability to perform such a simple movement is there for all individuals, regardless of the level of a person as knowledge and his slash her being a grown-up or a baby a scholar or an illiterate. Theses are the kind of abilities we come equipped with naturally, without learning and being taught. It sits within us and is in charge of all. It is Tao, never diminishes nor inflates. Worldly knowledge acquired through learning can be forgotten. A gymnast can abandon his slash her techniques and a musician can lose his slash her skills without practicing. The essence of Tao and its extension are always in charge of the macro universe the nature, and the micro universe the human being as self. We are associated with it unconsciously since the first day. Because it encompasses the whole nature within us, we also call it native self. Tao is within and surrounding us. It needs not be worshipped nor debated over. Because its existence is unconditional, regardless of race, color, nationality, religion or status. It is impartial and stays constant. In receiving Tao, we not only find the origin of the universe, but also the Divine Self. We get to know the highest power in the universe as well as the genuine nature in charge itself.
we discover the ultimate truth of the cosmos as well as the integrity of ourselves. Recognizing that the laws which govern the universe also govern us makes us be able to return to our true nature. To probe further, the most essential concept in Tao is that we all possess it intrinsically. It is the wisdom and ability we were born with without learning or practicing. It is one ash conscience which is like the spirit of God the divine and immortal nature. It is invisible and intangible. For this reason, we call it genuine emptiness, which means that to be really empty, it goes beyond emptiness and can therefore have marvelous existence in it. Marvelous existence is the foundation for the sky the earth, human beings, all the creatures, and all existences. With omnipotence, Tao is called Great Lord of all beings. This Almighty Being is not only in charge of the entire universe, but also in charge of oneself. So the proverb is, Tao is within self which is the drive of all one as abilities, a physical body without Tao is useless. This is the treasure that we should all realize and fully explore. I, I, I. What it is in Dao when we look around the world, we admire the miracles and wonders of nature. Countless things change and move simultaneously every second, and yet in order and in harmony. So do our bodies. Countless biochemical reactions and physical functions occur concurrently within our bodies. Without learning and thinking that comes subjectively, the thousands of activities that happen within us are the extension and action of Tao. And all together, it is one single self. It functions naturally and automatically without the need for our intents to be involved. This is the effect of Tao within us. Tao is not only in control of the universe and nature, but also in charge of every human being in his slash her own actions. In other words, it is the same source that governs us as well as everything else. Tao is invisible and intangible, but it has been working out its magic before day one. Thereafter, languages, cultures, religious scriptures, literature, and civilization were developed. They all originate from Tao functioning within us. People don't realize it is Tao that has been residing and working within us and have used soul to represent the confusing and yet irrefutable being. Because it is eternal and intangible, we also call it true self. This true self is the most abundant, brilliant, and imperishable being. Let us take a look at our tangible body and see if it can be the true self. We know the pictures taken throughout one as life show different faces and expressions. We recognize people by face, but our looks change and are not permanent. The handicapped, with impaired arms or legs, can also lead a complete life. One with a transplanted animal heart is still a human being. Even our brain cells keep decreasing and changing every second from the moment we were born. Therefore, the physical body is only the interim residence of the true self. 
though it seems so real, solid and alive, it turns into dirt eventually. We call it false self because of its tentative and transient nature. By recognizing the difference between the true self and the false self, we understand the reason and importance for us to receive Tao. Luckily, we are given the opportunity of receiving Tao and learning the three treasures. The three treasures are straightforward yet profound. The meaning and details of them will be illustrated through the rite of receiving Tao. Here, we only discuss two issues. First, by receiving Tao, the true self gets plumped out. It leads to our conscience. Upon the time when material pursuance surpasses spiritual seeking, giving up the true self only makes us a walking corpse. In order to fulfill and satisfy the sensational desires of the false self, we may commit wrongdoings and harm others, eventually creating troubles for ourselves. Our inner conscience is identified and enlightened by receiving Tao. Thus, the body gets to work with the spirit in a mutually beneficial and harmonious way, making our lives joyful and meaningful. Second, by receiving Tao, the front door or main gate of our bodies gets opened. It leads us to conscience, mercy and wisdom. When we leave a house, we leave through the front door. If the front door is locked, we may have to leave through the back door, or even by breaking the window or jumping off the balcony. We may fall and get hurt by doing so. Our body is like a house and our soul is the master who lives in the house. One day, when the body is aged and depleted and the soul has to leave, we can imagine its horror if it cannot leave through the correct exit. This is the pain and discomfort human beings experience at the coming of death and after death. As we know, for most people, when they are dying, their body shows stiffness and signs of helplessness and confusion. After we receive Tao, the door of life and death will be opened. Being able to receive Tao and the three treasures while having the door to heaven opened, we have the opportunity to recognize the true self and the Tao that dwells within us. We are going to treat people and the world with conscience and make our lives more meaningful. We can transcend life and death. Within a hundred years, we will be able to return to where we came from. Therefore, the heavenly Tao is also the way to a return back to heaven. To probe further, the enlightenment of Tao is superior to studying thousands of sutras. This is the value of Tao. The enlightenment of Tao opens the main gate, the front door, which is the entrance to heaven. It gives us the guarantee to be exempted from rebirth cycles and to reach eternity. The superiority of this enlightenment lies in that it surpasses Buddhas and saints, it exceeds the scope of sutras and dharmas, and it transcends the universe. Tao is therefore source of all sutras, king of all dharmas, mother of all Buddhas, and creator of the universe. Transcendence of rebirth cycles leads to eternity. 
being imperishable, thou never deteriorates, and we had never lost it at all. Hence thou is the direct way back to heaven. I be dot what do I get in RECI beginning DA as mentioned earlier, by receiving thou, we act upon our conscience, gain more wisdom, and find the door to heaven. In addition to these basics, we also benefit from the following for our lifetime. A being away from sufferings and closer to happiness the troubles and worries we face in our daily lives mostly result from our disregard of the true self. Receiving Tao helps us to recognize the Tao that has been dwelling in us and to restore the beauty of the true self so that our behavior and mind is free from being controlled by the earthly pleasures and being swayed by the losses and gains of the material world. Since our minds are cultivated spiritually, devils would not approach and get close to us. Thus, our fortune can be altered from bad to bright and we can obtain real joy. Be being away from disaster and calamities Tao has been passed on through generations to one single master since the beginning of human history. The threat of its passage weaves through ancient civilizations, including China and India. However, in recent centuries, Human beings had been trapped by materialism and a weaker sense of right and wrong. Wars prompted the development of powerful lethal weapons. In reviewing the thousands of years of human history, we realize, in just less than 100 years, there had been two major world wars which caused numerous killings and tragedies. The abuse of science and technology has also destroyed the ecology, causing damage to the ozonosphere and the unbalance of the climate. The corruption of human beings' minds has called the natural disasters to come. The human has created calamity. God, with his mercy, makes Tao available to everybody in order to save good people. After we receive Tao, with the true meaning of Tao in mind, we will be conscientious. We can use the three treasures whenever something dangerous and uncontrollable happens to us we will be able to get away from bad encounters. This is a confessed fact. See transcending life and death life is a mixture of happiness and bitterness. Throughout the journey of life, we experience birth, growth, aging, illness, and death. Joys are momentary and wealth is here today and gone tomorrow. Rather than seeking the pleasure of material life, the wise make full use of their lifetime searching the true meaning of life and eternity. In old times, doubt could only be received after harsh self-cultivation. Among the hermits looking for the master in order to receive Tao, only very few could obtain it. Whereas in this century, Tao is allowed to be spread and transmitted through the authorized masters to the truth seekers. The master points out the main gate of life and death, assuring the completeness of our true self. With the true self as our guide, which keeps us away from evil and greed, it helps us think, speak, 
and act in accordance with our conscience and intuition. Death then becomes the return of our soul to the eternal and peaceful home where we came from. Thus, we will have lasting joy. He achieving sacred beings the enlightenment of Tao, which reveals the true self, is like the planting of the seed of righteousness and integrity. Through self-cultivation and self-improvement, the nurturing of wisdom, kindness, and purity, it will blossom and produce the fruit of sacred mind and eternal life. In time of overwhelming utilitarianism, Tao is the lighthouse to the truth. Receiving Tao, and then cultivating ourselves, not only improves our own lives, but also gives us the opportunity to better the world. After we receive Tao, we act upon our conscience and care for people around us. We cherish Tao and disregard personal disadvantages. Then we make an effort to spread the message of Tao to the world, in order for everyone to benefit from it. We are devoting ourselves to the work of God, and certainly will achieve spiritual perfection in both this world and the world after life. To probe further, the supremacy of Tao is based on the heavenly decree of God, by which grand masters can perform the passage of Tao. The enlightenment of Tao from grand masters directly opens the main gate of our bodies, which revives our divine nature. It reveals that heaven is not beyond oneself. Instead, one as true self merges into the entire universe. This is the supremacy of Tao. 1. With the heavenly decree, the enlightenment of Tao is extremely profound and marvelous. It cannot be completely expressed by any words of languages. It is not recorded on any scriptures or sutras. It cannot be described by preaching, nor can it be acquired by human intelligence, nor derived from knowledge and experience, nor achieved from gifted talents. Because the above mentioned all have to be created and can be eliminated, which means that they cannot last forever themselves. They all bear partiality and cannot be applied universally. Hence, they cannot surpass life cycles, nor can they reach eternity. 2. The wonder of the effects and omnipotence of Tao is beyond words. It is the wisdom that does not come from learning. It is what we acquire from God and possess intrinsically. It is the same divine heart before the creation of the universe. It is conscience, the holy heart. It is the divine and immortal nature the Spirit of God. 3. Tao is too marvelous to be described. It makes us know without learning and function without practicing. It is a prior wisdom, perception, potency, and ability. It is not constrained by words or languages. It functions without thinking, intents, or even actions. However, it can create the sky, the world, the human, all beings, and all existences. All these, after being created, still cannot carry on without Tao even for one moment. Tao is therefore called Great Lord of all beings. 
form. Without Tao, the stars and planets in the sky wouldn't he have been in order. The sun and the moon couldn't he have illuminated or revolved properly. Then the yin-yang energies wouldn't he have circulated, and, as a result, this world wouldn't he have been suitable for all of us to live in five. Without Tao, the five primary elements of the earth, metal, wood, water, fire, and soil, wouldn't he have been balanced and complemented one another, which could have put the entire world in chaos. Mountains would have collapsed, lands would have cracked, and oceans would have dried up. Likewise, this world wouldn't he have been an environment for us to live in six. Without Tao, we, human beings, wouldn't he have been able to walk, to see, to hear, to speak, or to move. Our physical bodies would deteriorate quickly into a pile of soil in a hundred days. 7. If one really comprehends the effects and omnipotence of Tao, and can practice accordingly and persistently, one can communicate with and be united with God. This is the absolute truth. It is a glory and marvel beyond description. Therefore, it not after death that one becomes a Buddha. It is when one is still alive that one achieves being a Buddha. And to be a Buddha is to revive and hold on to a one as divine and original nature. This is what we benefit from attaining and practicing Tao. Do what do we need to receive Dao? We have discussed the many benefits we obtain after receiving Tao. Some would wonder, why there is so much given to us. Of course, we should realize it comes from God as grace toward human beings. This allows doubt to be spread around the world, especially at the approaching of the worldwide calamity. People with merit and conscientious mind will have the opportunity of learning about Tao and the way back to heaven. It always holds true that people who had the fortune of receiving Tao are derived from the tree of righteous ancestors. In addition, during the passage of Tao, it is required that we make promises to God that after we receive Tao, we will keep in mind the true meaning of Tao and put it into action in our daily life. What we speak and what we do will all be based on our conscience. The after we receive Tao, we offer help to those in need of it and do our best to indicate doubt to more people so that they can all benefit from the grace of God. See, after we attain the three treasures, we promise not to tell them to any other person. The three treasures can only be transmitted through authorized masters in front of God. If we reveal them to any person, they become invalid to the person, and we also defy the heavenly decree. All the promises required are reasonable and achievable. It goes with our nature. If we practice and keep the promises, we will be able to become a wiser and a better person. We will become merciful, and nurture the good seed of doubt planted in our mind. One last thing to mention is that one of the reasons we are able to receive doubt is due to the good deeds of our ancestors.
Therefore, as we persistently practice Tao, our ancestors will also benefit from it and so will our descendants. As long as you are prepared for the above mentioned, you are qualified to receive Tao, no matter what nationality, race, or religion you belong to. Notes, in order to be exempted from the rebirth cycles, to avoid the ordeal of hell, to alleviate the suffering and misfortunes in our lives, and to be able to return back to heaven after death and enjoy permanent happiness, we have to receive Tao. And the general qualifications are, 1. To be with a compassionate heart, and to be fortunate enough to be born in a time when Tao is available to the public. 2. To have sown the seeds of virtue by helping many people and offering lots of charitable services in the previous lives. This is the divine affinity with God. 3. To have ancestors with beneficences and welfare work as well. 4. To meet the introducer and guarantor who indicate the way to attain Tao to me. It is very likely that, in the previous lives, we did charitable services together, or we sell C-U-L-T-I-D-A-T-E-D together in the same religion. So, in this life, when Tao is available, we can help each other out and practice Tao together again. So time is right for Tao due to our divine affinity. D.I. What impact does receiving DAO have on ME as we mentioned before, and like the old days when hermits had to leave their families to receive Tao through meditation and self-cultivation, Tao, at the present time, can be received in a way that is applicable and conforming to our practical needs. We don't have to give up our lifestyle in order to attain Tao. By the grace of God, Tao is intended to be delivered to the public at all levels of occupations and around the world, rather than being limited to a privileged group of people. The impacts that receiving Tao can have on our daily life are summarized as the following, A. Receiving Tao creates no conflicts with any religions Tao governs the universe including all human beings. It existed before the formation of any religions. It is concordant with all religions in the sense that religions preach the awareness of conscience and the pursuit of the truth. We don't need to give up our religion in order to receive Tao. On the contrary, by receiving Tao, we will have further understanding of the truth. The conscience becomes our ultimate guidance due to the variations of cultures, customs, backgrounds, legislation, and value systems, it is difficult to find a universal guideline for all of us to follow in our daily life. In receiving Tao, the main commandment is to act by our conscience, the true self, rather than by literature. We should be sensitive to the conscience, rather than be familiar with the laws. C. We will voluntarily keep the promise made while receiving Tao through receiving Tao. We are not offered conscience or true self, but merely the opening of the door to a wisdom and mercy. Therefore, 
we restore the heavenly principles inherent in us, and strengthen the power originating from our conscience. There is no external force that makes us keep the promises and commitments that we made when we received Tao. The only force comes from the guilty feelings that result from our misbehaviors, which reduces the mistakes we make. The practicing Tao can accommodate our worldly affairs the fulfillment of practicing Tao and conscientious awareness does not have to be accomplished in a temple or church. It is not required to abandon worldly belongings or relationships in order to attain the ultimate truth. Each individual can still have his slash her family, career, and schooling at the same time. As long as we keep in mind the basic guideline we should have our practicing Tao and getting closer to our divine self. We will make a better world by improving ourselves first after we receive Tao by realizing the true self and what we are, the feeling of joy comes to us. The improvements on the quality of our spiritual life will affect people surrounding us. By interacting and working together in Tao, we will make the world better with lower crime rate and less pollution. The wish of Maitreya will finally come true to turn the world into God's kingdom and make people all live in harmony. The I.I. What can attest the validity of Dao Dao, due to its completeness and generality, regulates the totality of all beings. Many people, after receiving Dao, with their wisdom, faith, and devotion, realize that Tao is the fundamental principle that governs all things. They comprehend the truth of the universe not only through literature, but also through daily living and nature. Their faith in Tao becomes strengthened and they move forward in their spiritual life. However, for people who haven't he or just received Tao, Tao can be confirmed through revelations. A anyone who has received Tao with the front door open shall die peacefully. One proof of this is that for those who have received Tao and died, their bodies remain soft and their faces vivid. Since the soul leaves the body through the correct exit, the corpse can actually remain UN corroded for a few days. With the most advanced modern science and technology, it is still difficult to explain this phenomenon. However, it is a fact that cannot be denied. This has happened before in some religions, but very rarely. For people who have received Tao, this kind of testimony is ubiquitous, unless they have committed serious sins and corrupted their own mind. This can prove the soul has reached an ultimate harmony. Be being the superintendent of the things on earth, Human beings are nonetheless weak. Since birth, we are subject to unpredictable accidents and natural disasters. There have been many people who encountered danger, used the three treasures with faith, and got away from the danger or reduced the damage to the minimum. Testimonies of this kind are numerous. The above two mentioned are rarely heard of and difficult to believe, 
but they are the immediate security given by God once a person has received Tao. Thereafter, with each individual as faith, wisdom, and the accumulation of good deeds, one will come to know the truth more and more. It is up to you to experience the value of this treasure. I hope you will have the opportunity to receive Tao, experience it in your life, achieve ultimate perfection, and realize eternity.